Hey, what's going on? It's uh, Greg Coit here from The Breakdown, and uh, today we are doing uh, another one of the live streams. I'm going to be joined by a guest uh, uh, shortly, um, somebody that uh, you folks may be familiar with. He is a little bit of a somewhat controversial, contentious individual, um, but that being said, I, I still find him to be a really interesting person. Uh, and full disclosure, you know, he, he's a buddy of mine and we, we have, you know, uh, kind of collaborated on on some uh, reports here and there in the past uh, back when I was like doing work with law enforcement today and also something with uh, Red Voice Media. And that would be Jonathan Lee Riches. Now, he he has, you know, a little bit of controversy associated with him for, you know, a handful of reasons. Some folks may not necessarily be like a huge fan of his, you know, at times intense gonzo style of journalism. Uh, I find it to be effective because he, he has broken some big stories, um, even even if his methods are perhaps maybe unorthodox or even even if they are considered to be, you know, maybe maybe too over the top. But uh, right now. I have Jonathan Lee Riches here with me. Jonathan, man, how are you? Hi, Greg. Uh, nice to see you again. I'm well. Thank you for asking. And thanks for having me. Come on. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I, you know, I was just prefacing the audience, you know, you know, letting them know like, hey, there, there is a little bit of, you know, controversy that surrounds you sometimes. And, and I know it, it pertains to, you know, just any number of things. You know, some folks take issue with, um, you know, the, the past criminal conviction, which I know I get the same thing sometimes because I myself, I, I'm I'm a reformed convict. And so mm -hmm. people kind of take aim at that. You have some folks that kind of poke fun at your uh, past litigious activities. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so why don't why don't you allow? So, you know, yeah, each of each what you just described, each was a. Uh different phases in my life. I think a lot of us in life go through different phases. And, uh, you know, I went through a period of incarceration and uh, legal troubles, went through a, pre, uh, a phase of uh, lawsuits, went through a phase of trolling. Now I'm going through a phase of um, true crime and reporting, um, you know, boots on the ground, uh, scenes of tragedies that are going on in our country right now. Yeah, and that's what I find most upsetting with uh, some of the criticism that you deal with. It's because a lot of your critics are just completely inept to the concept of somebody reinventing themselves. Uh, because people people do it all the time. People, you know, go through changes and stages in their life, and it's it's completely possible for somebody to do a uh, uh, you know a new lease on life, so to speak. Well, it's, it's not only that, but, you know, like me being a, a reporter and going out on the scene and reporting stuff, you know, these 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 there's haters out there and there's people that don't like what I'm doing. They'll actually try to warn the people that I'm trying to get interviews from or warn people at the scene that I'm in existence. But they blow it up and say, oh, well, a dangerous convicted felon is out on the scene pretending he's being a journalist and whatnot, you better be careful of him, you know, blah, 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 trying to incite, you know, the areas and, uh, against me or try to create some sort of, um, like, I'm out there doing something I'm not supposed to do. But, you know, I'm a journalist and I'm covering cases and it's a passion. It's something I enjoy doing. It's a, it's a uh, career that I've, um, you know, been trying to get better at trying to prove as I get on home in my craft. And it's something that I want to continue to do on a serious level, um, using all the, you know, the, the, the tools that, you know, was provided to me to go out there and make a difference. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Yeah, no. And, and, and speaking of, of your endeavors as a journalist, because, you know, the Jonathan Lee Riches investigates channel that has blown up fast. Um, you know, that, that has seen explosive growth. Uh, the likes of which that you you don't typically see uh, with newer YouTube channels that are just kind of you know uh, getting the ball rolling a few months into the game, you you exploded in subscriber growth you know considerably fast like faster than most people do. Yeah, and one year one year ago I wasn't uh, on YouTube. I mean I've had YouTube channels, 
But, you know, they, I would use those channels just to look at other people's YouTube channels. I wouldn't really put any content on my um, channels. But within the you know last year, uh, with this particular channel, Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates, I started posting true crime content in August of last year. So it's only been around, what, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, six, seven months and 40,000 subs. Uh, when I when I started using the channel in August, I had like four or five subs. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and that's that is amazing growth. And the cool thing about YouTube subscribers, they, they tend to be pretty loyal in, in some respects. They may not catch every upload, but they they will always come back to the channel. Like once they sub, usually they come back unless the content creator in question does something, I don't know, completely unforgivable in the realm of. Uh, you know, the, the average YouTube viewer's mind. Uh, yeah. But and, and, and another thing too, is, you know, uh, these, there's been national tragedies in the true crime community that's been happening since last year. Uh, you know, we have Moscow, Idaho, uh, we have the Alec Murdoch trial, Richard Allen with Delphi, Indiana, Summer Wells case. Uh, these are some big cases that the true crime community follows in each and every one of those cases. I would immediately go to the scene. I would go out there, boots on the ground, and get footage that I don't see other journalists getting. Going around there, uh, you know, scoping out the area, doing reenactments, trying to get interviews from you know neighbors and coworkers and uh, that are affiliated with the subjects at at hand. And uh, people are 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 liking that and and appreciating that. You know, uh, putting myself out there and putting my life on the line out there to try to get some sort of truth or understanding and 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 the the subs have you know been loyal to that and i appreciate that you know and they also inspire me uh to go out there and keep doing it keep doing this work yeah yeah and and you you really don't get enough credit for being you know what i consider to be you are a legitimate muckraker you are going out on the scene from you know where incidents have transpired um you are ardently working to to try to get uh, interviews for those who may have witnessed X, Y, and Z, or who may know uh, victims or you know alleged offenders involved in some of these high-profile cases, and that is that. What I find odd is is you get some pushback from doing what a journalist should be doing. You know that the type of people that would gladly consume like a true crime podcast or watch the evening news, there are people who do those things that think you are doing something wrong mm -hmm. by just engaging in, in standard uh, practices associated with journalism. What, what are your thoughts on that? Why, why do you think that is? Um, I think, you know, it, it, it's me, it's my past. I think that's a part of it because, you know, if I was a guy without a past and I was a guy, uh, you know, that uh, didn't have any baggage in my past, then yeah, I, I think people would be more acceptance of that, but it's just me. And it's just, and, 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 you know, I do every time I cover these cases, I do in each particular case, get that good interview with someone or get that good, you know, footage. And, 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 and I think a lot of it is other YouTube crime creators. Um, honestly, I think are jealous. I think some of them are jealous because a lot of them in the true crime community, a lot, not everyone, but a lot of them just sit behind, you know, their desk all day and, and talk about true crime, but they're not out there doing you know the work at the scene and stuff so all they can do is just criticize someone else that's actually out there doing the work god oh, so he's wasting his time or uh, you know he, whatever but i'm out there and i'm out there and, and then people like it and you know the people that are other that aren't out there they get they get jealous they envy they hate they hate off someone else's success and you know i like the true crime community. I like other creators. I think every true crime creator brings something different to the table. And I just bring a different element to the game, to, to, to this whole community by being there. Yeah, my own style, my own way, my own uniqueness, my own way to, uh, you know, express my own, you know, I've been through the legal system so I can provide some insight about the legal process. You know, what these, you know, what these defendants, the, you know, inmates and, my, you know, what inmates go through in prison and, you know, how they manipulate the system and the criminal, the mind of a criminal. I can give a little perspective of that because I've been surrounded by criminals for 10 years of my life. And I'm a convicted 
convicted criminal myself, though I'm a nonviolent offender, though, but I was just, I was in the prison system. So I know a lot of little that, that most people don't know on that other side of the fence. Yeah, no, it, it is weird. Um, you know, in, in this day and age, people kind of develop these weird uh, parasocial relationships um, where they think they know everything there is to know about, you know, a, a content creator and internet personality such as yourself. You know, I mean, you know, like, like, it seems like it's your haters that swear that they know everything that, that needs to be known about you because they always recite the same stuff. They're like, Oh, prison. Oh, funny lawsuits. So on and so forth. Uh, what, well, what are your thoughts on, you know, this weird, uh, uh, you know, day and age we're living in with these, um, concocted parasocial relationships where where people think they know the other person on the end of the screen um it's it's strange because they don't they don't know they're just going by what they hear and read i mean you know in the true crime community i would say for the last year 90 percent of people can say hey you know i'm i'm for the victims i'm out there trying to bring awareness i'm out there trying to make a difference. So I don't see what I'm doing is so harmful. I think, it, I just think it's, I think it's a small percentage though. I think it's like 10, 10% that maybe feels that way towards me. But, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't let these people thwart me. I, I, I still, you know, carry on, but why don't they just come and get to know me as a person or even talk to me, um, you know, respectfully instead of just bashing and understand my point of view. And, you know, I'm sure I would love to listen to other people's point of views that don't agree with the stuff I do for whatever the reasons. But it's always good to have a conversation and, and, and talk and uh, instead of just, you know, stigmatizing me and just have this whole negative thing, because I'm actually a very nice guy. I'm very, a very nice guy. I talk to people with manners, respectable, um, you know, and it's interesting as, as you and I know each other um, off off YouTube. We know each other on Facebook. Um, I have friends and associates from all walks of life, from all careers and professions. I'm friends with law enforcement. I'm friends with prosecutors. I'm friends with military. I'm friends with uh, cr uh, criminals. You know, I'm friends with all types of people, Facebook wise. You know, and but but you, you know, it. I understand the, every everything that's going on, and and they everyone thinks I'm pretty cool. That gets to know me. I'm I'm, I'm an actually nice dude. I'll bend over backwards for people. I love animals. Um, I hate, I actually despise criminals in a sense. I said I'm friends with criminals. I mean, people that, you know, convicted criminals that paid their debt to society got out trying to make a difference. I don't want to hang around or associate with bad apples at all. But, you know, we're just trying out there to be for the victims and, 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 and champion for victims' voices to be heard. And, and that's kind of the value system that I represent. Yeah, no, and, and and it's good that you bring up that that you're not a bad apple, um, because for those who are not aware, uh, a little bit of a development transpired about a week or so back, uh, involving the Buster Murdoch story that you're kind of following. Uh, I'm pretty sure my viewers are, are going to be familiar with with the Murdoch case in general, even though it, even though it's complicated, it is it is a long, storied case. You know, in, in wild case. actually, it's a wild case, but just. You know, financial trickery and, and deception and money, murder, scandal. Murder. Don't don't forget the attempted murder for hire spot thing or whatever. <laughs> On his own self. It's 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 wild and it's still ongoing. And there's a lot of cloud of suspicion, you know, in reference to uh, Alec Murdoch's son, Buster, which yes. is a mystery to a lot of people, and that's where I'm trying to you know, try to get some answers from him, trying to figure this out uh, if he's involved with any other shenanigans dealing with the Murdoch's. Yeah. And so I, I wanted to see if I could play a short clip um, where where you 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 were recently on court TV and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and, and this this individual was going over the reason as to why you, you were being invited on on court TV that day. So let me go ahead and bring that up. Now let me show you what's what's been happening and and I got these reports that there was um, someone following or harassing Buster and and Brooklyn so uh, we looked it up we've got uh, part of the police report I want to show you and this is what what the police report is saying um, 
On the evening of 3-6-2023, Brooklyn White exited her residence and witnessed a reporter looking into the windows of her vehicle. White is familiar with this reporter, who she identified as Jonathan Lee Riches. White explained that for the last few weeks, Riches has been following her and Buster while at the courthouse in Carleton County, South Carolina. She's aware of how Riches found her She's unaware of how Riches found her residence. White showed me a YouTube channel called Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates, which includes videos Riches has posted heckling Buster at the courthouse. Um, Buster has requested to not be listed in the involvements or any subsequent reports due to privacy concerns. So I look at that and I say, wait a minute, I, I know who Jonathan Lee Riches is. He's got a YouTube. So. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you, you went on, you did your interview with Court TV thereafter, which I thought that was actually really, really cool that they allowed you to come on and address the allegations made in this police yeah. report. And, and as you stated in the interview, and, and this will be a great opportunity for you to kind of like, you know, reiterate it, even though you didn't, you didn't get a lot of time, in my opinion, to, to yeah. speak on the matter and speak your piece on Court TV. Uh, but, you know, the, the crux of that was you were saying that you were doing just what every other journalist out there was doing, was just yep. hanging out on the public road, on the public sidewalk. Uh, yeah, just trying to get through that. Just trying to get the story. You know, uh, Buster Murdoff is a mystery. Uh, you know, after the after the after Alex Murdoff was convicted, people are curious to know about Buster. They want to get an interview from him. They want to talk. To him, so you know they're they're finding out places where he lives and trying to report on him and report what he's up to and everything like that. So you know, I did the exact same thing. Went down to one of Buster's residents in uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina. Out there, there was numerous media outlets. They actually have cameras out there from other journalists. Uh, you know, the tripod cameras looking out his way at his house, waiting for him to come out to get an interview. Uh, when he was coming out, they would try to talk to him, try, you know, just basically, you know, paparazzi type of deal, you know, and uh, for some odd reason, you know, and me being there with 50 other journalists, you know, this one female, I guess Buster's girlfriend, who I've never met and I can care less about, you know, claims that I was looking through her uh, car window, which isn't even even true. You know, I was never looking in anyone's car window. And for some reason, my name was singled out inside a police report from a female. I don't even know who she is. I could care less. Like I said, not to be mean, you know, about her. I, my, my concern is not even anything to do with her. It's, it's about trying to get an interview by Buster. One thing I find interesting about the police report was she said the incident happened on the 6th and she didn't file the police report to the 7th, right? A day later. So it makes me wonder if people got into her ear and just said, oh, that's Jonathan Lee Riches out there. He's a convicted felon. He's dangerous. You need to file a police report on him. And that's maybe why she singled me out opposed to everybody else. But, you know, when we were all out there as journalists that night, the police did come because I guess neighbors called the police or someone else did. And the police are telling all of us, we're fine. We didn't do anything wrong. We're out there just, you know, making sure that we don't block traffic in the road. Do not, you know, step on their property and do not um, knock on their door or anything. They don't want nobody knocking on the door. And we're all like, cool, whatever. That's thank you. Cool. We'll, we'll, we'll agree with that. That's fine. We, you know, we haven't been doing that. We're not going to do it. And uh, that's it, you know. And uh, for some reason, then I get name dropped inside a police report. I just think it's odd. It's weird. It's it's makes me feel like, hey, maybe then she's singling me out because I'm Jonathan Lee Riches. <laughs> You know, and uh, but I definitely wasn't looking inside her car. Matter of fact, when um, I was making lives about reporting on Buster and I was um, because she also filed a police report, uh, another police report days prior about people um, taking pictures of them through their windows of their house and and whatnot. And I actually was talking on my lives not encouraging that behavior, telling people I would never take photos of someone in their, their house. I feel like that's an invasion of privacy and, uh, you know, don't encourage that type of behavior. So I don't know where she's coming from, uh, why she would single me out, but I'm just doing my job just like anyone else and uh, following the laws. Yeah, no, that's that's what I was curious about, too, as well. The fact that you were the only person named in this you know police report what this lady was complaining you know complaining about 
you know, she's allegedly getting, she and, and Buster are allegedly getting uh, pestered to the point of harassment. And people are looking through, you know, car windows and, and windows of the houses, too. I think there was a, uh, a news report, um, you know, maybe a day or so prior where they were complaining about people were looking into their uh, apartment windows or something like that. But as it relates to this police report, yeah, you were the only, only person named in there. And it leads me to believe that it was not because she spotted you doing yeah. anything like that. I think it is 100% associated with her finding out about you yeah. after the fact. Somebody, you know, because she filed, she filed the police report a day later, you know, and she also emphasized that was heckling. I don't know if she said her or him at the courthouse. Now, in a sense, I saw them twice at the courthouse, two times when I was on uh, uh, YouTube Live, and I flat out asked Buster, did you kill Stephen Smith? More or less a couple questions, but I don't consider that heckling in a sense. And they walked they walked away and, and I never said anything to Brooklyn. I could click, again, I could care less about Brooklyn. It was about Buster asking you know questions of what happened to Stephen Smith. I asked him a few questions. He walked off. And never spoke to them again. You know, I never followed them and never chased them around the courthouse. This is when they were coming in and out of the court two times, two times. Now, there's other videos of people screaming Buster's next to Alex Murdoch and everything like that. And for some reason, people think that was me. Uh, it wasn't me. There was other reporters there doing the same thing, saying their own things. But it wasn't me. Not everything is me. <laughs> not yeah, everything. No, I was, you know, I'm, like, I'm I not going to lie. I was wondering. I, I'm not going to lie, because I, I think I saw that video where uh, People Magazine shared a snippet of that video on Instagram, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not going to lie. I, I saw that video where all you could hear was somebody saying, you know, Buster's next or something like that, you know, and it was in reference to to uh, Stephen the Smith. Individual, the individual that said that even acknowledged on his own social media accounts that he did it. It's an individual that goes by the name of Nerdy Attic. Uh, he's on, he's on, um, YouTube and he's on Twitter. He's putting out that he did say it. He, he's the one that did it. It was him. He's acknowledging that he's doing it. And people for some reason thinks it was me, maybe because he sounds like me. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll admit, like I was saying, uh, it did kind of sound like your voice, you know, so it, I was wondering. <laughs> it kind of did. Yeah. But it wasn't me, you know, and I, you know, Buster next could be interpreted as a threat, I guess. You know, in a sense, if you're saying Buster's next, you know, that's very ambiguous of what the, you know, what you mean by that. Um, the questioning that I asked Buster when I seen him in out of the court is, did you kill Stephen Smith? You know, did you? And, you know, I didn't flat out accuse him. Just ask, did you kill murder Steve or what happened to Stephen Smith? You know, those are legit questions. That's what media does. They ask questions, you know, and, uh, you know, Stephen Smith is there's a cloud of mystery behind uh, the murder of Stephen Smith, a, a young 19-year-old nursing student that was found dead in, in, in the side of the road there near the Mock Murdoch's home back in 2015. And uh, it, it was a hit and run, according to the coroner, and people don't buy it, including Stephen Smith's family. They, they want an investigation. They want it back open. They want to find out who did this. And, uh, you know, there's a cloud of suspicion that Buster's tied with him. And it would have been nice for Buster to flat out say, no, or I don't, I, I, don't I don't know anything about Stephen Smith, but the, this silence is kind of strange itself too. That he yeah, doesn't. No, it, that Murdoch family uh, just has this weird cloud of just bad things happening. You you wow. you had the housekeeper who <laughs> passed away what in 2019, I think it was 2018, 2019. Fell. And, and, Fell. and you get this. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. The 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 story is. She tripped over a dog and fell down the stairs, and and oops, she's dead. Uh, now they they recently exhumed her body. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. They, yeah, they're real relaunching that in a sense. You could say that that they're relaunching that investigation of what happened. You know, that's the mysterious circumstances too, and then the fact that Alec, uh, you know, got some, you know, in short, some sort of money involved with her death and didn't even pass it over to the other family right away. So you know. Who knows? And then Mallory Beach. Mallory Beach is another mysterious, uh, you know, uh, with his, with not mysterious in the sense she died, you know, with her boat and, and Alec Murdoch's son, Paul, being involved with that. And then, you know, they hit, they hit out on Alex Murdoch by Uncle Jesse, 
uh, Uncle Eddie, I mean, Uncle Eddie, you know, the, you know, a little bit after uh, the murders happened, there's just a lot of strange things going on. Yeah, yeah, I remember the story with uh, with that young lady was uh, the now deceased Murdaugh was about to go on trial for a uh, a, a BUI, boating under the influence. Yeah. And uh, apparently, like at like what two a.m. or three a.m., he allegedly mm-hmm. runs into something and uh oh, woman overboard and she died. February two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Uh, gosh, that just so many, you know. And, and and the the story with Stephen Smith, the the alleged story around him, is there is suspicion that he may have had some kind of romantic affair. Mm-hmm with uh, uh buster when when they were younger and the working theory is or at least what what is you know being purported by some people is that perhaps the family wanted to do something about stephen smith because he was very uh outspoken about yeah. his orientation whereas if buster you know had a secret life like that you know maybe he was keeping it in the closet as they say uh, what what are your thoughts on that theory? Do you, do you think it's a good theory, or do you think there may be even more to it? I you know I don't know. Um, you know I wish that Stephen Smith, somebody's like firsthand knowledge, know if Stephen was involved with the Murdoffs in any way. But I haven't really seen that smoking gun in a sense of a link between those two. The only thing you know the the proximity of how um, you know where he was found, the circumstances. And, you know, the rumors circulating. That's the only thing I really know about a connection to Murdoch. It could be not involved but whatsoever, but you would think that Stephen Smith or you would think that uh, Buster would speak out and flat out say, I'm not involved or I have nothing to do with it. Um, he doesn't, you know, and that's just, just, just one of many. There's other things with Buster that's suspicious. I don't know if you listen to the jailhouse tapes. There's been hours and hours of jailhouse tapes that got released via FOIA request. With, uh, where Alex Murdoch was in jail discussing with Buster, talking about, you know, getting money out and hiding money in a sense before, you know, they take it because of lawsuits and Buster having a power of attorney over Alec Murdoch's affairs. And Buster was also named also in that lawsuit with uh, against Mallory Beach, which he ended up settling with their family for. I don't know what he settled for recently. So there's just a lot of things that Buster's, fingerprints in his hands and you know that he seems like he's involved with and people just want these answers or they would just want they want him to talk there you know he's not obligated to talk he can stay quiet but like i said on court tv in a sense like if i'm down there and he feels like he doesn't want to be he doesn't want to bother with anyone just say you don't want to be bothered but he doesn't even say anything he he just stays quiet so, you know, I'm not a mind reader just because he says, why? I don't know if he wants to be bothered or not or doesn't want to talk. I just don't know until he says something to somebody about something. But he doesn't. He doesn't say anything to anyone. So that's where people are curious and suspect by that. Now, he could be quiet because he got a lawyer and his lawyer selling him remain quiet. You don't talk. You don't shoot yourself in the mouth. Anything you say could be incriminating that, you know, but he's not talking. It reminds me of uh, uh, Brian Laundry's parents. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember you. You uh, were the individual that scored that famous interview. Uh, I, I believe with uh, uh, one of the uh, Laundry family members, right? Yeah, Cassie Laundry. Yeah. Oh, uh, but Brian Laundry's parents, quiet as quiet as could be, you know. And obviously, uh, you know the 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 Petito family thinks they're involved, you know, in in some way because they're being sued for it, along with their attorney, Bertolino. But, you know, the silence that I saw out of laundries face-to-face with them trying to get answers, too. Just talk. Want to get some answers. Get some insight. Just the total silence is like, to me, silence is like guilt in that sense. And, you know, with with Buster, I feel like the same thing is silence is guilt to me. In my mind. I'm not saying he is guilty. I just, that's my opinion on on, on that one. You know? So with the with you being named in that particular police report, mm-hmm. um, you know, there obviously when, when you were doing the court TV appearance, there was, you know, some um, rando uh, attorney based out of the state in question where the police report was filed. Um, are you aware if you've been named in any other reports? Have you, have you gone near, you know, uh, 
Buster and the gang since that incident? Or well, maybe you- I have, or maybe I haven't, but it's not enough for law enforcement, or hasn't been enough for law enforcement to contact me because zero law enforcement has contacted me. Not one person from law enforcement. And, and Jonathan Lee Rich's investigate, I clearly leave my contact information in the descriptions of my video and on my channel. So if there was this issue, you would think I would either one be arrested or even you know interviewed or investigated or talked to by law enforcement, and not one law enforcement has reached out. And I don't think they will because I just think it is um, uh, frivolousness. And the police know that I uh, didn't do a crime based off what they said. Uh, but remember when that law- lawyer said that you know me being in that police report, and that was the second police report that uh, Brooklyn filed. There's also a process when it comes to uh, a someone trying to get a restraining order on someone. Uh, they have to file police reports before obtaining a restraining order. They have to provide the uh, judge with copies of the police reports before a judge will, you know, grant somebody a restraining order. So maybe she's just setting herself up to get a restraining order on people in the future by using these incidents, like the one where she named me and another one where she was naming other people for. You know, you know, pictures in her window. Maybe she's going to use these two police reports for the next person to actually get a restraining order on somebody. But if she tries to get a restraining order on me, on someone I really never said her name prior, I don't know anything about her. It would, you know, anyone could file anything on anyone, a police report or even a restraining order. It would be just kicked out right instantly. And I, you know, I don't even think it would even apply to me because I don't even live in that state. Yeah, no, that, even- that's. That was what I, I one thing I took issue with. What that with when that lawyer was talking on court TV, talking about all they need is two police reports, and it's like, all right, she may be an attorney, but she was you know omitting a whole lot of other information that is really required to successfully obtain a restraining order. Other states call them orders of protection. They operate in the same way. Where it's like, hey, you can't come with an X amount of feet of, you know, such and such person. But they have to be based on more than just documented complaints. They have to be yeah, based basically on you would have to initiate contact with her, like initiating contact with her or something, or calling her, or being told by her to leave you leave her alone and continuing to, you know, engage with her. I mean, that 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 would be grounds. But again, like for me, I don't know her number. I could care less. Don't want to call her. Never called her. Uh, never spoke to her. Never even said her name out of my. The only time I'm saying her name is pretty much what we're talking about now. And when I talked on Court TV, other than that, I never publicly said her name. Like I, don't, I could care less. I never reached out to her or anything like that. So for me, if you get a restraining order. It's, it's, it's gonna. You know, she's not gonna successfully get it. And she can manipulate the judge, and she could also lie because apparently in the police report. She's saying that I peeked through windows. I mean, that's a blatant lie. It's not true. It's not true. So it's enough for her to say in a police report. Who knows what other stuff she could make up? She could make up stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, I feel bad for anyone out there, you know, that I might try to get a story from her and Buster because she might be like one of those people that bear false, false witness and, and start making accusations against people that are not true. Well, yeah, we do know at least, you know, she's in close proximity to a family that has a big history of lying. Uh. (laughs) Yeah. And, uh, you know, knowing that, you know, but to see Brooklyn and and Buster, you know, they got to expect to be in the public. You know, they chose to be in the public eye. Brooklyn chose to walk side by side, in a sense, with Buster at the courthouse day in and day out, holding his hand and going into court. Of course, people are going to be curious about Buster and want to try to get that story from him. They, he chose to put himself in the public eye. And there's a lot of other future cases going on with the Murdochs. Uh, you know, with Alec Murdoch, uh, numerous trials are possibly coming up. I know the Mallory Beach wrongful death suit. They set a trial date for August of this year coming up with that. So Buster's always going to be in the spotlight. So people are going to try to get you know, photographs from him. He clearly said that in the jailhouse tapes with his own dad saying that people are following him around to the gas station, inside stores, you know, reporters trying to get stories, not stalkers or anything, reporters, he's, he's saying. Uh, the, people just want to get those questions. He was, he was, he was at the uh, casino with John Marvin when they went out to Vegas. You know, the reporters took pictures of him in the casino. 
Uh, this was at the time when, you know, money was involved and people were speculating that Buster was trying to spend the money. You yeah. know, he's, he, he chose this. He chose to be in the spotlight. Yeah. And that's the thing. And, and this is this this is it would chill the First Amendment beyond, you know, belief if individuals who are part of, you know, uh, um, uh, what, what do you say? Like they're public figures. Mm -hmm. If they could just make themselves be a public figure, but not a public figure at the same time by getting, you know, orders of protection against journalists you, that you can't do that. I mean, unless there is a journalist legitimately doing something that is criminal against a public figure. Sorry, public figures. It's not going to happen. You're always going to have somebody following you. You're going to have paparazzi. You're going to have people taking pictures. You're going to have people asking questions. All right. It takes more than just inconvenient, uh, uh, not a, a non-physical contact with a reporter to, to get a restraining order. It just doesn't work like that. Not only so, that, but if, if they try just based on reporters doing their job, and like you said, as long as they don't do nothing criminal, and overstep their boundaries. I mean, you know, if he tried to do that, like for instance, if he, if he tried to file any of them, like on me, like, he could they both could say face legal repercussions on their end for trying to you know do that to someone you know you, you, you sue a report or, no, i'm sorry you file a restraining order for on a reporter for doing their job and obviously that that restraining order is going to get kicked out right out of the door from the judge well the, the subject of that could then sue them you know sue them for uh you know uh, harassment or you know anything you know for you know doing a fake restraining order sue them back you know, yeah. I mean, you know, there's consequences of that. So they got to be very, very careful. They got to be very careful. And not only that, they're public figures. Their name will be dragged into the spotlight even more if they file restraining order service. Somebody it goes counter to what they're trying to stay. You know, if they're trying to stay low, you wouldn't want to file restraining orders on people uh, just on reporters for doing their job because their other reporters are going to report on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And, and so I, I think never ends. You know, I, I think the best thing, like, you know, if, if I were in, you know, Buster Murdoch's shoes, I'll be honest, I would just keep quiet. I'd lay my head down low. If I see the paparazzi or anything like that, I won't answer the questions. I'll walk by him and I'll pretend like I don't see him and go about my business. And anybody in his proximity, you know, that, 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 you know, just happened to be in a circle. Yeah, they should probably do the same thing, you know, but they, they're not going to be able to, <laughs> they're not going to be able to you know, order of protection their way out of this. Like, yeah, you, you can't, you can't get a restraining order on the media. It just, it doesn't work like that. And, um, and Buster, you know, they could take, they could take measures on themselves. They feel unsafe, get some cameras, get some security, get some fences, move to another location, you know, take those steps, you know, uh, obviously the people know where they live right now and media I don't know if media is still out in front of their house. I, I really don't know. Um, it's been a, what, an over a week now since that incident happened. So maybe the media circus calmed down. But when I was there, there was like 50 reporters out there. That'd be terrifying for me if, if I was just, you know, I walked out and there was 50, ter uh, you know, 50 media reporters there. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call the police and make false reports on the reporters, but I would be like thinking of a way to move out of there and go to a different location, a safer, more, you know, private location to get away from that, at least in the time being. I wouldn't just sit there like a sitting duck in a sense to, you know, have photographers snap pictures of me, uh, you know, when you step out or if I stepped out, if I was in his shoes. So, you know, obviously we, we've, touched on on a lot of you know uh the controversial matters and what have you i want to move on to something a, a little bit more fun you know because it's something that i've been curious about uh i've known you for a few years now what is it like going on two three years something like that mm -hmm. um, yeah sometimes you know when i see some of your videos on facebook or youtube or whatever i have to ask myself i'm like okay Am I seeing, you know, the real Jonathan Lee Riches right now? Or am I seeing am I seeing a little bit of a character, like a, a funny character type of thing? Uh, and the reason why I, I ask that sometimes I, I look back to the uh, uh, upload that you did. I think it was either earlier today or, or late yesterday. The In-N-Out Burger. <laughs> In-N-Out, yeah. So um, In-N-Out Burger, like, I, you know, I try to 
you know, I want to engage with my following and kind of be myself a little bit and just have some um, fun in the, in the, in the process and just be me. I, you know, um, I like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm currently, um, out of state of Florida right now, working on some cases. I don't want to reveal my location right now because I got a good story I'm doing, but I'm, you know, in another state right now doing true crime and, you know, happened to came across a in and out burger. So I was like, all right, let me just eat an in and out burger and share it with my um, subs. You know, I, I, I want to talk about true crime and tra travel in the, in the, in, in the process, but you know, I, I'm taking the true crime uh, work that I do very, very seriously. I'm, I'm genuine, try to uh, want to, you know, bring awareness and try to be at the crime scenes when the situation is fluid to give people a in-depth analysis and a perspective and, 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 and footage there so people can come to their own conclusions. Not about me. I really don't want to make it about me. I want to make it about the scenes that where I'm at, you know, with my own commentating. But, you know, you can either listen to my commentating or not. But at least you get to see what's going on, because a lot of times I've noticed in the true crime scene is with these journalists, they, they're, they're not out there doing the work. What they do is they go out to a scene like like we'll use Moscow, Idaho and uh, the tragedy up there. Uh, with Brian Koberger, you know, there was reporters at that Moscow home, but they would sit in their cars, they'd come out with their tripod pods, do a 10 minute report, and then go back in their cars and sit there all, all day and just do one, you know, in the morning and one in the evening, and that's it. But they're not out there doing nothing. They're not walking around trying to figure things out or, you know, give people, uh, you know, all kinds of footage around the area or, you know, go out there and talk to neighbors or hand out flyers or even do activism themselves to try to find out who did the crime and, and that's the kind of what the perspective that i do I, I i try to also figure out who did this and who did these type of crimes and who could be responsible and that you know, that goes with a little bit of uh online digging uh you know uh interviewing people and trying to put the pieces together and you know my my subs and my followers um enjoy that and we all collectively try to figure this a mystery out it's like a mystery so uh, I guess they obviously you don't want to share your your current location because you, as you mentioned earlier, you know, you got a big thing cooking. Um, but what is next without getting too specific for Jonathan Lee Riches and Jonathan Lee Riches investigates? Do you, do you have any more ventures? Uh, uh, yeah. You know, um, so I'm already planned this adventure. I got numerous adventures coming up in um, April, the beginning of April, uh, Lori Val, uh, Lori Vallow, uh, Dave Bell, she is accused of uh, murdering two children. And uh, I don't know if you ever followed her case, Chad Dave Bell, Lori Vallow, Dave Bell, it's, uh, you know, it's been process has been going on for a couple of years. She's finally being put on trial in Boise, Idaho. Um, going to go cover her case. One thing interesting about her case is the judge has barred all um, cameras and audio from the courtroom. So the only people, you know, and a lot of eyeballs are going to be about this case. So the only way you're going to be able to get footage, you know, anything that what's going on with the case is people that are inside the courtroom and coming out sharing what's going on. And I'm going to cover that case because I feel like I can give um, the best analysis that I can possibly give to everybody by going into the courtroom with a notepad, notebook, and write down everything. And during the breaks, I'm going to come out and do my lives and share with everybody. Um, while I'm up there, I'm also going to cover more Moscow, Idaho footage. Um, there is also a missing uh, young six-year-old uh, boy named Michael Vaughn from Fruitland, Idaho. That's still a mystery. He's missing. I think I'm going to get some footage and coverage there. Dylan Rounds, who is a young man um, out of Northwest uh, Utah, who's missing. I'm going to cover that case a little bit. So I got these cases, you know, in that general Idaho, uh, Utah area. On top of Brian Kohlberger preliminary hearing happening in um, June, which I feel is going to be a big case. Uh, I got some of my mods and me. What we're working on with his case is we're going to be live streaming his uh, proceedings, but I'm also going to be outside the courthouse. And we're going to do both. We're going to do some live streaming of the proceedings, plus me interviewing and talking to people and giving people boots on the ground perspectives outside the courtroom. So you get to, you know, and get to see two sides of what's going on up there. And then anything else that pops up that's breaking. Um, I don't really know anything else offhand that's set, but, you know, I'm on standby. I'm on standby uh, when, when breaking news happens. 
I can just jump on a plane and I can go. And that's, you know, that's what I'm vowing to my subs and my followers. We're, we're, we're going to be the first at the scene in, in future events coming up. Whenever yes. something comes up, because unfortunately tragedies keep popping up. Yeah, no, that, that, that is the unfortunate part of, of, you know, the workload in journalism, especially with, with your, particular niche of true crime. And, and and let me just touch on this. I don't make a lot of money doing this at all. I mean, it's enough to cover the expenses. It really is. And, you know, I'm doing this as a passion because I enjoy it and I want to try to make a difference and help. You know, I made mistakes in the past and I'm just trying to redeem myself and out there and trying to help in any way I can. Uh, you know, most, you know, uh, my, my channel, you know, I have a pretty big channel, but Again, it costs a lot of money to get to these locations. It's not cheap flying to Idaho from Florida. Uh, even covering the Dave Al trial is going to cost me a few thousand dollars of my own money that I'm willing to put in to to, to help and, and 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 see. You know, yeah. so it, I'm not I'm not doing this for the money. It's not the money. Yeah, but there are you do have a loyal following. You do have mm -hmm. folks that love 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 the content that you're bringing forth, and they love how informative it is. And also how, how personal it is, because you do you do get very personal with your videos. Like, you know, while while some folks probably spend way more time than they should worrying about production value or anything like that, you have no problem whatsoever. You'll be in a hotel room, you'll pop up a, a phone camera, and you'll just start talking to the phone. And and yeah. you'll hit that upload button. And kind of like what I'm doing now at this hotel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but now, uh, look how authentic that is. Yeah, I, I tried to be organic. I tried to be, you know, I don't, I, I'm not into the production studio or anything like that. I just got my cell phone camera. I have a GoPro camera and that's it, you know, and I have my media press attire. Now I wear a lot of media press attire. You know, some of the haters say I'm fake media or I'm not a real media person, you know, and, and any one of us could be a citizen journalist. You know that uh, yeah. citizen journalist, anyone can be the media. You don't have, need no special licensing or requirements to be the media. It can be anybody. And I wear media attire because I feel like when I'm at the scenes and I'm seen with media attire that, you know, I, there won't be, if I wasn't a media attire, I feel like more police would probably be called because they'd be like a suspicious person's outside or whatnot. The media attire kind of gives, you know, the police and, and people around the scenes an idea, hey, this guy's press, he's just reporting stories and they, and they leave me alone. No one really ever bothers me. Matter of fact, police all the time when I'm at the scenes have always waved to me, ask me how, you do, how I'm doing and whatnot, you know, I, you know, professional. I feel like if I didn't have the media attire, I'd probably be maybe harassed uh, by people because they'd be curious of why I'm there, you know? So the media attire kind of, it's kind of like a symbol. It's saying, hey, this guy is media, you know, he's just out there doing his job and he's not doing anything like bad. You know, he's not in here and any bad reasons. Yeah. So before we go ahead and sign off, uh, you know, I think we've said your channel name numerous times, but. I'm going to, you know, uh, ask you to, you know, share where folks can follow you, not just on YouTube, but if you want to share your Twitter, your Facebook, whatever, where can folks stay up to date with what you're doing? So I have uh, multiple YouTube channels. I have three of them, actually. The uh, main one is uh, Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates. I got uh, JLR with a copyright symbol. That's another backup channel. And I also got Jonathan Lee Riches. Um I have these channels and, uh, you know, I use this one, majority one, I use this one, but, you know, the, all three of them combined have over 60,000 subs. Um, and then also, you know, I'm trying to get my YouTube or my Twitter account back. Uh, fortunately, I lost my Twitter account last year. Uh, now there's new ownership with Twitter. Hopefully I could get my old one back, but I am back on um, Twitter on a new account. Um, so I'm you know, rocking and rolling there. Instagram, I have Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates. Instagram, Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates. Facebook. So, I'm, I'm, you know, every time I pump out a video, I post on all the platforms. I might even have a TikTok account, though. I don't use it that much. I think it's Jonathan Lee Riches Official. I should change it to Investigates. Um, I kind of just like that Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates because I like to investigate. And I like to, you know, I'm a very inquisitive guy, you know, and I ask questions and I try to dig in on um, understanding why these things happen. You know, just because cases get solved or a suspect gets identified, to me, I don't feel like it's over. I feel like there's a lot of back history, back stories of why it happened, who's involved, who isn't involved, you know, uh, and what happens afterward, you know, the long-term effects 
and whatnot. It's kind of almost like um, it's almost like human trends. I like that topic, human trends, because you're trying to give you know what other people think that are centered around the case, what they're going through, what the community's going through. I I, I try to go a little bit more deeper. And also earlier, you did mention that you know obviously what you're doing it costs money. It's not free. So if anybody wants to be able to help, you know, fund your efforts with Jonathan Lee Riches Investigates, how can they do that? So on my um, um, on my YouTube channel, in the uh, description of my videos or um, with the, you know, look at my bio on my YouTube channel, you'll see PayPal and uh, you'll see my cash app links. These are the primary resources and people do contribute. You know, people send you know, $20 here, $15 there. And it helps. It helps for gas money. It helps, uh, you know, for food and lodging and whatnot, travel expenses to get to these locations or even, you know, uh, a, a, a equipment. Like I got my own tripod now, um, you know, using that stuff to, you know, help my craft and help get better and help share, you know, these adventures and these true crime uh, cases that I'm going on. Um, so it does make it does help and it makes a difference. So you can see them on those channels there in the bio and the description. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you again, uh, Jonathan, for for taking time out of your evening to come mm -hmm. on and, and, you know, discuss not only what you're doing, but That's some funny. of the some of the boiling dramas <laughs> associated with your efforts. Yeah. Uh, and, and also it's 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 always a pleasure. And let me know. Let me know when you're in Arizona or you're going to be headed over this way. Uh, we're going to hang out. We're going to raise the roof, Jonathan, because that's well overdue. Well, if it was years ago, we would have been covering the Jody Arias trial, right? In Arizona. <laughs> I would have been out there doing that. That was a big trial. Um, yeah, no, I, I was, I was uh, still in prison when that was going on. <laughs> I think I was, too. Uh, honestly, I think I was with the Arias. But, yeah, true crime is, you know, and I, I it's, it's just a passion, man. You know, I I was also in a political stage, though. I, I uh you know, I, I try my best to keep my politics out of true crime because I do think true crime is a, 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 a topic that all walks of life can come together. You know, people from all walks of life come together with true crime. They, everyone leaves politics out of it. And they just the all common goal is victims and trying to figure out who did these uh, horrendous acts. And uh, it's something I enjoy, you, you know, and it's something I want to progress with and get better at. And, uh, you know, I'm still evolving in it. And, you know, if I've learned, I changed some of my tactics over the last year, you know, I used to be kind of like with the protesting with bullhorns and stuff, I'm not really into that anymore. And I do have more empathy for um, people centered around these cases. So hopefully I can get better and hopefully I uh, strive to uh, do my best to improve on um, things and, you know, behaviors that maybe I'm lacking or not doing right. Yeah, no, it's everything's a learning process, man. And, and, you know, a lot of this stuff doesn't come with a with an instruction manual. So I get it, dude. <laughs> Thank you for having me on, Greg. And I uh, hope all is well. And, uh, you know, keep doing your thing, too, for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much. You have a good night, Jonathan. All right. too. Thanks, Greg. Have a great day.